to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, can I have a motion to accept the agenda for this evening? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At this point, I'd like to turn uh, the base over to the uh, superintendent for his updates. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you. Nice to see anyone after last week. Uh, but certainly feels great to be back in our normal uh, uh, routines and uh, from what was surely a, a challenging week for our entire uh, community even as we have a few uh, residents still without power such as Mr. Grados and family and the McCann's for example um, we are fortunate that we certainly didn't sustain any of the major types of damage that uh, many of our uh, neighbors in New York and New Jersey were unfortunate to uh, have such an impact um, you know, we did lose the five days of school, um, but I truly believe if it had not been uh, for the efforts of village leadership such as Mayor Smith, our village administrator, Larry Schopfer, um, DPW staff, Parks and Recreation staff, and everyone else involved, I'm certain um, that we would have been out much longer. Um, I was here um, almost all of last week, with the exception of Monday, and I can tell you their commitment um, and collaboration was incredibly impressive. Um, they worked very closely with uh, me and Gary Knowles, our Director of Buildings and Grounds, to make sure the schools were a priority, um, that we are collaborating in all of our efforts, communicating together with Con Ed uh, to make sure our needs were being jointly addressed and Con Ed clearly knew what the appropriate priorities were in our community. Um, so they certainly deserve uh, many, many accolades for their, for their efforts and, and commitment. I um, do want to recognize Gary Knowles uh, and the maintenance and custodial staff because I have to tell you when I got here Tuesday morning, they were here with chainsaws buzzing cleaning up our grounds. Um, they certainly uh, came out in some rough weather uh, leaving their families and homes cold to, to be here to address our needs. We were fortunate that we did not receive uh, much damage in around our schools. Uh, we had a handful of trees down, uh, no damage to any of the facilities, uh, which was fortunate. Um, but certainly there was a good deal of, of cleanup involved. Um, also want to recognize the efforts of our food service staff uh, because they were here, as you can imagine, um, having to clean out our freezers of all spoiled food product and sanitize everything and then begin to place new orders. Um, but as you can imagine, when we didn't know the power was coming on, we didn't know uh, when we could place the orders, we didn't know when we would receive our food deliveries because our uh, distributor was from the island. Um, so we didn't know if they'd be able to make it to us. So as we began to communicate throughout the week everything that was going on and we began to prepare for what we thought was going to be the school opening on Monday as it was, um, I did make uh, some communication to the parent community that we should anticipate um, bringing uh, children bringing lunches to school with them, um, recognizing that we would have limited products for sale. Um, our food service uh, company was prepared to provide some basic pasta and other things that we had in-house or that we could purchase at local stores. Um, so we were ready to go with some basics, but I have to tell you uh, the PT SA and Good Life Gourmet uh, step forward and Tanya our, our thank yous um, and through some donations not only from Good Life um, but many of our community members uh, we had a donation of a, a, over a hundred bag lunches for our students that they were able to enjoy in school yesterday. Um, as I visited um, every school during lunchtime there weren't any hungry children I'll tell you that uh, most seemed just be to, thrilled to be back in school um, but everybody had a, a nice plate of food before them. So um, we certainly thank both the PTSA and Good Life uh, Gourmet for all of their efforts as well. Um, you know, these are just little examples of the many, many things that uh, make Irvington so special. Um, one of the many reasons I feel so fortunate to be here. Um, but I can tell you on all my days in town last week, whether it was uh, walking up and down Main Street, meeting uh, different business owners, uh, townsfolk that I hadn't met before, or spending a little time in our warming center at Main Street School that we 
arranged uh, with the township. Um, many, many appreciative, supportive people, and everyone had a genuine concern for, for the school and for the community, and it was great to see. Um, so before, I, I do want to interrupt you, because I know uh, you, you would not say it yourself, but on behalf of the board, and I think the public should realize that, uh, you know, last week uh, you also did not have power. You waited in, uh, you know, and you, you were found yourself uh, ways to get to the district. I know personally that you waited in hours of gas lines to get gas for your car to be able to get here while leaving your family uh, to deal with power issues and things like that and putting the district first. And uh, um, I know with all the calls that we were on on a daily basis as I was trying to shuffle my family from warm place to warm place, you were here uh, on site uh, uh, trying to get the schools uh, back online and working with uh, uh, the team and also the community. So on behalf of the board, and I do believe uh, the community owes you a debt of gratitude for all of your hard work last week, and we, we very much appreciate you uh, putting us first. Great. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a tremendous team effort, and I was just glad to be a part of the team. And you know, we're we're moving in the right direction right now. Uh, one of the next conversations that we're going to have to engage in, and hopefully not too distant future, will be that of the school calendar. Uh, but I, I, I would caution us to not to start to go f too far forward and start thinking about modifying vacation times just yet. Um, we're anticipating that there will be some action um, uh, through uh, legislature um, that may address this uh, for us. Um, there um, is belief that we have some uh, assembly and s members and senators uh, Notably, uh, Nolan and Flanagan um, are um, crafting some legislation at this point in time. Um, we also believe that uh, Assemblywoman Gunther is also um, going to be crafting a bill to look to address this. There is history, um, looking back to Irene last year, uh, where there was relief provided for schools in addressing calendar needs. Um, so there, but there's real speculation here. I don't think there's question as to whether or not bills are going to be introduced. It's um, in what time frame they're going to be acted upon. Um, I've uh, read articles and heard through education and political sources that it could happen as soon as the next week or two, uh, but others saying that there's possibility, depending how elections go, that it may not be until December or January. So I think we have to be patient and see what comes out of that. Um, but the reality, how we look at things, we recognize that we have to have 180 student days. Um, state permits us to account, uh, count uh, up to four uh, superintendents' conference days within that 180 days. Um, our calendar in total this year has um, 185 total days, 180 student days, um, but we have more than four. Um, a superintendent conference day. So when you back out and do the math on it, um, we're in a position right now uh, looking at the four superintendent conference days that we've had, two in August, one in September, one last month, um, that we're at 179 days. As our uh, district calendar was approved in this um, spring and then slightly modified during the summer, um, it does inform us that um, if we're in need of another day, that the um, superintendent's conference day on April 1st would become a student day. So that would make our magic 180 uh, days. Um, however, we recognize that we're only in early November and we're anticipating snow tomorrow. Uh, so there will be further complications, I'm certain. Uh, I don't know if we want to listen to the Farmer's Almanac right now, uh, but there will be challenges even if uh, we're able to follow that pathway. Um, so I think we need to be patient. Let's see what our leaders in Albany are able to do for us. Let's see what options come um, out, and then we will have those conversations. Um, I think the conversations that we have to have go beyond 180 days. We have to have a focus on student instructional days as well and to think about what our needs are for our children. Um, so understand where we are. Uh, we have a plan to meet the 180. If Mother Nature has other plans and brings us a lot of snow and our legislators uh, uh, do not present some options, we'll be having some difficult conversations in the next month. Um, but at this point, I just ask everybody to be patient and we will certainly convey information um, as we have it available um, to us. Um, the final thing that I do want to mention um, that 
Um, Robert Wood, who's been an assist, uh, interim assistant principal at the middle school, will be ending uh, his uh, stint here as we'll be welcoming back uh, Ms. Chapnick in just over a week. And uh, I certainly want to recognize him for his efforts and hard work. He's filled an important leadership role in our district during a, a critical time with a, the rollout of curricular changes in APPR. Not only has he been, uh, bless you, a, a fine manager and assistant uh, to Mr. Sotile and the entire staff, um, but he's really turned out to be a quality instructional leader working with teachers and it's been a good uh, service to kids and families as well. So uh, certainly want to publicly acknowledge Mr. Wood and thank him for his time in district. What thank answer. you very much. Can I add Mrs. Kerner. One thing? Um, just kind of going back to what you were saying at the beginning, just to add to the call outs or shout outs to thank you. I also think that both you and Bob did a great job in communicating to the community. I know a lot of people have commented and <laughs> to some degree you as well. A lot of people had commented that, you know, they really um, and Brian Smith as well, but the, the level of communication and the constant communication and the information flow was, was outstanding. So thank you, both of you. It's a great job. It's one of our main foci this year, so <laughs> we're glad to deliver. Alrighty, we all feel very good about ourselves now, so we'll move on to uh, um, procedures. Uh, we'll, now we'll turn the microphone over to the community to discuss topics that appear on the agenda. Would, may I ask that maybe we provide clarity on the one resolution that we have some questions? Uh, yeah, we, we, we could do that. I guess before, just to go a little bit out of order, there is one resolution um, on here. Uh, it is resolution uh, 9.2, which was uh, a resolution uh, that seemed to deal a lot with the fields. Uh, but in effect is really an accounting measure. So Bev, maybe you could explain that to uh, the public as to why we're dealing with uh, this this evening. Certainly. Um, as everyone knows, we're dealing with uh, problems at Eastfield. And I contacted our bond council to find out um, if the expenses that we're incurring now would be able to be folded into a bond should the district decide to bond the, um, for these expenditures or for improvements to the field above and beyond the remediation. I was told by bond council the only way that can be done is um, to do this resolution which they drafted to reimburse the general fund for uh, out of the proceeds of the bond. So this is just um, an accounting measure, uh, it's for the uh, IRS, that would allow us to recoup from, for the general fund, recoup the expenses of the um, testing and the remediation prior to putting it to a voter referendum. The three million dollars, we do not anticipate that amount, we just plugged in an amount that in our worst, worst, worst case scenario um, would cover us. So it's, sim it's similar to when we do a referendum, uh, it, when we're doing any kind of a vote, we, maximum amount that we are looking at doing is two million, but in reality it could be significantly less it, it could than be a hundred thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't know. But also too is it, it, in, it also states in the beginning of the um, recommended action that if a, the only way we could bond is if it's approved by qualified voters. So this is not giving us authorization to bond, borrow, or anything. It's only giving us authorization to recoup those expenditures should we bond. And, the, and we've uh, uh, spent sort of in the neighborhood of fifty to $75,000 so far. All right, yeah. which I will not be able to recoup because the board has not voted on this yet. Right. So that's um, why it's important. Any, any bills that I have now, I'm holding until you pass this so that I would be able to recoup them if possible. Right. Thank you. I think that makes things uh, pretty clear. Okay. Um, I guess this will turn it back over to the community if anybody has any questions about anything on the agenda. And welcome back. 
Mr. Dawson. Thank you. Uh, I'm not really here to have a question. I, I really am here to say something about the administration and the board that is already been said. And going around this community and talking to people over the past week because of all the events that were taking place, it was very well noticed that the superintendent, everybody knows he's from New Jersey and he was still here every day with Monday. That was noticed by a lot of people. And it was also noticed by staff who, while they're always going to give you their best, when somebody makes that kind of effort, they're always willing to get a little more. And, and just in, in uh, connection with the last thing that Ms. Miller just said, the other thing that I have found over this past week is that this community believes very strongly in the things that have been done. So <clears throat> while you might feel it's necessary, and it probably is proper to go through an explanation like you just gave, you have earned the trust all of you up there of this community. So understand that while a few may, may say things against that, the vast majority of people in this community now trust the school district. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you, John. John. Yeah, no, never just expected to respond to Mr. Wilson in this regard. Uh, I want to make it very clear even more publicly than I have so far, that no one said trust hadn't been earned. What is clear, though, is that transparency must be worked hard to keep up. In that regard, let me make one more small criticism, which is that Ben Miller's explanation should have occurred before the resolution appeared on the uh, agenda. The resolution is written in legalese, as it must be, but it is in no way transparent to the average reader. So I would like to, in the future, to have anything that reminds us about money issues to be very, very clear, and to have an additional explanation aside, perhaps, from what the agenda is on the agenda. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I would just like to respond to that quickly. I, I would just like to suggest to the public that we all have phone numbers. We all have, uh, I, I think we've shown ourselves as our, our superintendent has to be available at any time and to jump to a conclusion that somehow this is not transparent or that we are trying to hide something and to create an issue where it doesn't exist is not productive. And that's not what this board is about. That's not what this administration is about. And quite frankly, in your post today, wasted a lot of people's time on something that if anyone would have called us was very readily apparent. And, and I do disagree with you. Well, no, well, I'm not done yet. You, you, you know, you, 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 I'll give you the mic back. Um, I disagree. It is written in legalese, but it is clear on its face that we were not attempting to authorize anything other than adding these costs to a to-be-voted-upon bond if and when it were to occur. Nobody can read that and conclude anything else reasonably. So to, to create an issue that we were trying to do something other than what it said on its face, I don't understand. I have two points to make, if I may. Sure. Number one, I think what you're saying is quite naive. Really? Yes. Number two, speaking of phone numbers, I spoke to you at length yesterday by email back and forth and asked you specifically about whether there was a discussion or any item as regards to the field. Right. You did not respond. I think I responded and said that there was not and there is not. This is not an well, item relating have, to the field. Well, you have a resolution that has $3 million attached to it. Whether you think it's meaningless or not, other people think it has meaning. I did, you know, listen, I'm not, uh, Dan, you, your, your, your post today speaks for itself, it does. and this resolution speaks for itself, and I think that people will understand that this board is operated the way it will continue to operate, which is completely transparent. Frankly, as, as I've told you, I think you misread the resolution, 
and I think you jumped the gun. But my point is, is we were being completely transparent, and I don't see how you're saying it had $3 million attached to it. It had the number $3 million, and the way it was written was not clear to an average reader. It may be clear to a lawyer, and guess what? I went to my own personal lawyer to see it before I wrote anything. Okay. okay. What, what you were doing is perfectly clear to me. What I'm trying to point out to you is that it wasn't clear to the community. Yeah. And I believe truly that you are naive to think that it was clear. Thank you. Maybe I am. Um, is there anybody else? Okay, does. Oh, I'm sorry. I would just like to say once again the vast majority of this community backs you. Thank you. Um, I, I guess I'd like to have a motion at this point to take the consent agenda, but are there any questions or discussions regarding that before we start? I do have a comment, but not a question. But do you want to start uh, going uh, no. on anything on the consent agenda? No. Uh, two minor questions on the consent agenda. Um, um, sorry. The first one is um, on, I'm kind of out of, I'm going out of order, a section, um, subject 9.17, where we talked about the Main Street School various capital improvement projects, bid rejection, and I guess my question is just if, since we are rejecting the bid for the capital improvement um, projects at Main Street School, what would be our next step at this point? Uh, the bids came in very, very high. Um, way over our budget, so we're asking the board to reject all of those bids. I've been in consultation with our architects, and at this time, um, we're recommending that we don't do the radiator covers and that we're looking at incorporating the electrical work that needs to be done at Main Street School with other electrical RFPs that will uh, need to be done for different buildings and going out with one electrical um, RFP to cover many buildings and hopefully we'll get better pricing because we do have some gym lighting, some uh, emergency lighting here at the campus, etc. And we're hoping that if we incorporate it, we can get a better price. And so, uh, with the, I, I'm not familiar, those are the two items in it or are we looking? That was the, those oh, are the only two, two items. items. <coughs> okay. okay, great, thank you. Um, one more question is on section 9.9, 9.9, the field trip, grade 8, Washington, D.C. Um, I know that um, David Sotel had said it's his goal to, to hopefully the whole grade will go, but usually there's one or two that for whatever reason don't end up making the trip or, or more. Um, and it's just been something that I know the community has talked about on an ongoing basis over the past few years. So my question is, what would happen educationally to the kids who perhaps will not be on the Washington trip? Do we have plans for them? Will we develop alternative plans for them if they're in the schools? So um, a plan is developed. The students are grouped. So even though they might not be normally in the same classes, they actually, for those three days, move through in a group. And um, teachers do leave work. When possible, uh, the class is taught by an eighth grade teacher in that curriculum area. So should there be, for instance, I want to say Karen Kirsch last year did not go on the trip. She would be teaching the science. Um, it's been, I think, they've, they've been fairly successful at doing that. But if not, another teacher does cover that class. But it's based on the work that the teachers leave behind. Um, so the children, the students are given a full schedule for those three days. Um, last year there were fewer than 10. Also what they found is that some kids who um, don't go on the Washington trip, it's because they're on, they don't come to school either. They just stay home. Okay. Or they, they actually leave for a vacation early. Okay. I mean, as long as we have a plan for that. Yes. You know, there I, is an education. You, you, you've heard the, in the past the stories, so, okay, thanks. Mr. Whitney. No comment. Um, I, I guess uh, John left. I wanted to give him a shout out. I know that uh, typically when we've uh, dealt with uh, donations to the district, we've, we've given people their props. So I want to do that. 
Um, I think we'll, we'll be shortly accepting donations from the following uh, folks and groups, and I want to thank all of them. Martin Kunitz, William and Lynn Stone, Graham and Barbara Keenan, Thomas Starr, Timothy and Susan Allport, the PTSA, James Kent, and the IEF. Thank you all for your donations, and uh, keep giving us stuff. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Very <laughs> we like it. Um, okay, I guess with that, can I get a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. I have a second? Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. Uh, that takes us up to uh, comments uh, from the community on anything that is not on the agenda that relates uh, to the district. Hearing none, um, does the board have anything that we would like to comment upon? I have one thing. Mr. Whitney. In view of Robin's question about the capital expenditures, it, does it make sense for us at some point to review the overall capital needs, um, given that things have shifted a bit, um, to do that in public uh, at a you know, later board meeting when you've had sufficient time to prepare? that be part and parcel with the buildings and grounds report? I mean, I know that there's been a few meetings of the buildings and grounds, but I don't think we've had any public reporting of those meetings yet. Because apparently it happens in the second meeting mm -hmm. of the month. The, next, the, the, the next meeting, oh. there will be okay. a report. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, whenever you've had it, you know, it's a good time for the administration to. Yeah. And I, I think it's a good question because we've had aside from the challenges associated with Eastfield and the significant cost that we've incurred there, which has changed our direction and, and, and had us, we've really had to shelve some maintenance projects and some initiatives um, that, you know, maybe wouldn't fall into the normal capital category, but just maintenance type issues. Um, you know, you can see in the agenda, we've had a, a boiler go down that's costing us $22,000 to repair. And clearly that money is now, you know, having to, be pulled from other projects. Um, so I, I think and that we also have the phase two of fire stopping, which is significant. So, yes. but no, I think it, it would be appropriate because I know sure. Ms. Miller and her office are busy making it all add up for us. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, our next meeting, God willing, with the nor'easter coming, will be Tuesday, November twentieth. At 7:30 here, and can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Wow. 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 Wow.